Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and you are listening to Subhash Chandran. In this video, we will try to understand the key roles and responsibilities of designers and design engineers, especially piping designers and piping design engineers. Because most of us have this doubt in our mind about what does actually a designer do, what does actually a design engineer do. So I will try my best to clear your doubts and differentiate these two different roles. Now let's get into the video. So before going into the video, we should understand one important thing. Though piping designers and piping design engineers are two different roles, both of them works in the same team actually. They belong to a same team known as a piping team. And both of them work for the same objective. Objective is to complete the project, complete the piping work. The only difference is that they both have a different responsibilities and they both perform different roles in the team. So that's what we are going to explore in this video. So before going to the video, let me tell you one thing very clearly. Whatever comparisons that I am going to show in this video, it is only for educational purpose. Note that that information, slides or contents of this video are not made to glorify or to degrade or to discriminate any professions within or outside India. So I kindly request you all not to take this too personally. So let's get in. The roles and responsibilities that we are going to discuss are based on the MNC roles and responsibilities. That's because in small scale companies and in medium scale companies actually these roles and responsibilities gets overlapped because at times you have to do a designer role and sometimes you have to do an engineering role. So that's because that the profit margin and the, the working style and working nature organization culture is totally different. Only in MNCs you can see this crystal clear difference between the roles and responsibilities for two different profession basically. And we are only going to focus on to the major responsibilities that's because that there will be lot and lot of minor responsibility that one has has to do being in any organization so we are going to ignore those minor responsibilities and i will try to cover the major responsibilities within 10 key points so let's get in let's get into the point let's start with the first one and note that this column is for designers and this column is for design engineers now let's start exploring basically designers when it comes to designers designers are considered to be an expert of tools in whatever tools that they are using whether it is a 2d software or a 3d software but they are considered to be an expert because they have the in-depth knowledge about how to handle the options in the software. So if you are planning for a designer actually, you must focus on developing this knowledge to learn each and every options of the tools. That is where you contribute for the design actually. And if you come to the design engineering profession, they are more into procedures, guidelines, methods and general engineering practices to take some certain decisions during the project and for the completion of the project within the deadlines. So this is where they play a vital role. So if you are trying to be a design engineer then you must slowly develop this understanding about the procedures guidelines methods and engineering practices over a period of time now let's go to the point number two point number two is about pipe routing skill designers are considered to be exceptionally good in doing the pipe routing and they are highly capable in analyzing all the factors when it comes to pipe routing so we don't have to bother about it they have an exceptional skill in doing this activity but when it comes to design engineers design engineers are really good at layout planning layout planning this is where to place an equipment what should be the distance between equipment to an equipment and where should we lay the pipe rack and how do we take the piping actually what is the maintenance access and what is the free access what is the safety access so all these things they design engineers are really good at so basically they are good at layout planning let's go to point number three designers are considered to be an experts of drawings because drawing preparation and making is not an easiest task it involves various activities such as sizing the drawing sectioning the plot into various drawings and sizing the text positioning the text and making the layout appealing and readable these many activities are involved in drawing but designers are highly knowledgeable in doing all these activities comfortably that's one of the reason they are considered to be an experts of drawings wherein design engineers are more conversant with the codes and standards and the minimum requirements identified in these codes and standards generally in most of the projects and we use asme and api actually so design engineers are well conversant and well known of these requirements that are identified in these codes and standards let's go to point four the actual work of a designer starts only after receiving the inputs from design engineers. So basically designers has to wait for the input or they can check with the uh, design engineers about their input to start their work actually. Wherein if you see the design engineers they have to prepare gather and distribute these inputs to designers so in a, only then designers will be able to start their work so the major responsibility of the designer is to receive the inputs from design engineer and uh, the major responsibility of the design engineer is to give the inputs to the designer basically let's go to the point number five so the point number five is 
Like once after receiving the inputs from design engineers, the entire focus of the designer goes in developing the design. So you don't have to focus on multiple things actually. He just have to put his entire focus in developing the uh, piping design in terms of uh, trying out different options, trying out different possibilities, checking the existing projects. So he has to do multiple iterations in developing the design basically. Wherein if you see the design engineers, design engineers has to review the design that are developed by designers and they also have to do the coordination with the different teams such as electrical, instrumentation, process, civil and projects and construction and they also have to manage the designers who are working under them in order to get the work done. Let's go to point number six actually. Designers are highly good in developing the projects from conceptual stage basically because they are able to make multiple options very quickly. So that will help the design engineer to conclude his options. Otherwise, the design engineer has to prepare a conceptual design to conclude any particular option. But here, designers actually helping the design engineers to make his decision. Wherein if you look at the role of the design engineer, design engineers has to review the design that are prepared by designers to ensure whether it complies with all the requirements such as safety requirements, operation requirements, project requirements or client specific requirements. So it has to comply with each and every requirements. So the major responsibility of the design engineer is to ensure that design meets all the requirements or not. Let's go to the seventh point. Piping designers focus on to the fewer piping system. Let's take for an example, a piping design engineer develops a design for a particular line. His focus goes entirely on to that particular line. Wherein the role of a design engineer is to check the design from its totality. He has to check the design of the whole area, whether the design of one particular line impacts the other line or not, whether he has to do any changes in order to achieve the cost cutting or to improve the entire design of the whole area. So basically design engineer's focus goes to the whole area. Let's go to point number eight. It's a responsibility of the designer to prepare the major deliverables such as drawings and MTOs. Wherein if you see the design engineers actually, design engineers prepare procedures, specifications, specifications such as material specification, procurement specification and data sheet. Since drawings and MTOs are already prepared by designers actually, design engineers has to focus only on the documentation part of it. Let's go to point number 9 actually. It's one of the key responsibility of the designer to highlight the layout constraint. Layout constraints such as Generally, designer has to face this scenario again and again uh, in work actually. Constraints such as uh, piping is clashing with the cable tray or uh, the cable tray location is actually coming uh, uh, in the near to the support structure or underground uh, piping is clashing with the support structure or piping is clashing with the instrumentation. So there will be a lot of such scenarios actually. So these kind of constraints if piping designer uh, cannot uh, resolve this actually immediately it has to be addressed to the design engineers. So the role of the design engineer has to analyze the situation and discuss and make as many discussions as possible and check with the standards and check with the good uh, technical people who can resolve this actually and bring out and come out with the ideas, conclusive ideas to resolve the constraints actually. So by this way, we can produce a very good design. Instead, if designers don't observe and share it with the design engineer, it may create a bigger problem in the future. Now let's go to the last point. The last point of this video is one of the important points that has to be kept in mind for both the designers and design engineers. Let's see what it is actually. The major responsibility, I mean the very important responsibility of the designer is to come out with a cost effective ideas on the table. Rather, if they sit back and wait for the design engineers to tell each and every small instruction, then it will create a rift between designer and design engineer. Then it is uh, really not possible to take it further in the projects actually. And at the same time, the role of the design engineer is to appreciate and recognize the work that are being done by the design engineers. If you don't appreciate the designer, they won't help you with different ideas that can even make your work easier. So please, please keep this point because this is one of the very important points that will help you to have a frictionless working atmosphere. So I guess now you are able to understand the difference between designers and design engineers. Thank you so much for watching my video and thanks for supporting my channel. If you really like this video, please don't hesitate to give me a like because that means a lot to me. And also don't forget to share with your friends because that will help me to promote my video because as I'm not using any other promotion to uh, share this videos to multiple people actually, I'm just posting only into LinkedIn. And that's it. I'm not uh, posting it anywhere actually. So please help me to uh, promote this video and please help me to promote my channel. And if you feel that I'm really doing a good work and please subscribe to my channel to motivate me. I'll meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.